Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about dice systems. Now, dice systems are an integral part of building your TTRPG, um, but there's a lot of hidden questions in the process of making them that I'd like to sort of talk about my thoughts on and um, hopefully give you guys some ideas on how you might um, design your own dice systems. So, first of all, what is a dice system? In this video, I'm going to be talking about a dice system used for resolving actions. Someone does some action, and then, with a bit of randomness combined with their the character's skill in that action, you can determine the outcome. Now, most of the time, you would think, roll a dice, add a number, if it's big enough, then you succeed. But there's a lot of hidden assumptions in that statement um, that are hiding a bunch of different options that you have for how you might want to build them. So, first of all, let's think about outcomes. Um, because it's not as simple as a, as a binary success-fail. Um, there's nothing wrong with binary success-fail, many, many systems use it, but it's not your only option. Um, for example, you know, even D&D that has, in most cases, success-fail, does have your natural ones, and your natural 20s, which are critical success and critical fail. And sometimes those are given sort of mechanical consequence. But you might want to think about having a, a very popular option of the success but, or you're sort of just a success. Um, these are really good in sort of more narrative focused games where you want to be able to build in a bit of tension. Um, similarly, you might have a, a fail and you you didn't quite succeed, but you made some progress towards succeeding. Um, and that kind of granularity that we might have in our in our dice system, um, it's important to make sure that, to some degree at least, the granularity of your dice reflect that. Um, for example, the d4 only has four different options. So if you had, you know, terrible fail fail, success, super success, a d4 could perfectly match one to one with your outcomes. Um, and then all the way, you know, a d100 is much more granular than the d4 and a d20 kind of in the middle. Um, and you want to think about how that granularity um, relates to your, your potential outcomes. And it's sort of right at the bottom here, this, but how, did, how is that going to feel? Um, I, I don't know how many of you have um, played D and D, but um, as a common touch point, hopefully some of you have. And the thing that's quite interesting about D and D is it it has a binary success fail, but you have twenty different outcomes, which means that often, you know, say the DC was was like say the DC was fifteen, and you have got expertise and a plus, so a plus like nine. It means that theoretically. You could roll, you know, a 28 with a, you know, a 19 plus 9, and you are way higher than the DC. You are, you are smashing that DC. But unless the DM does something uh, extra for you in that context, there's no real advantage to succeeding the DC by this much, um, and that doesn't always feel very good. Um, so you might want to think about. Um, and that's why you might want to match the granularity of your dice system to your granularity of your outcomes. Um, another thing that you might want to think about in terms of your outcomes, really simple question, are, are you a roll high system or a roll low system? Um, most of the time people use roll high because it feels good to roll big numbers, but that might be the exactly why you want to use a roll low system. I think the most famous example of a roll low system I can think of is um, Call of Cthulhu, which is a horror uh, game about you know people slowly uh, succumbing to the madness of these unknowable forces. Um, and actually, it uses a roll low system. Now, there's some some uh, elegance to a roll low system in that if you set the DC equal to like a skill value that people have, 
it naturally means that as you get better at something, you're more likely to succeed, uh, which is a nice bit of elegance. But the main reason I think Roll Low works really well in Call of Cthulhu is because it has that kind of uncanny nature to it. It's like rolling small numbers is bad, is good, which is sort of flipped on its head from how it normally works, and that feeds into the theme. Similarly, it uses a D100, and although having a, a fairly binary success fail, um, the D100 has that granular feel that you would want in a, in a sort of eldritch horror inspired game. Um, finally, a quick note, um, you don't have to use numbers for a dice system, you can use um, symbolic dice. Um, I think numbers are more common, but um, symbols are often good if you're going for a much more narrative focused game rather than a sort of tactical um, vibe. Um, the, the difficulty, of course, with using non-numbered dice is people don't have them, and people are going to have to buy special dice for your game, or have some kind of conversion between numbers and symbols. Um, but yeah. So, those are the way we can think about outcomes. And essentially what our dice system is doing is trying to map the, the dice that you roll into those outcomes. And we do that with probability distributions. This is how we, we can think about what our dice system does. So, um, I've kind of got two different metrics that you might want to think about in how you want to shape your probability distributions so that they, they have the game feel that you want them to have. Um, so, first of all is this um, flat versus bell curve. Um, and not going too much into the maths right now, um, a flat distribution would look something like this, bell curve like this orange line here, and basically a bell curve is a more realistic system. Um, you know, if you think about most people's abilities in certain actions, they're more likely to perform at their average than they are to perform at the extremes. That being said, we don't necessarily want a purely realistic system. We might want extreme results to happen, because that is more dramatic. Um, and having having a really small chance of those extreme outcomes might not necessarily be what you want. Um, so D&D, &D, in this case, would be... Uh, I don't know how to draw an ampersand. <laughs> Let's just do an M. D&D &D would be this sort of um, blue line here, that's your D20 every single result is equally likely, um, and this bell curve might be something like a 3d6, uh, um, which is a fairly fairly um, commonly used system. I think a lot of modern systems nowadays I'm seeing come out are going for a bit of a middle ground and are doing a, um, a 2d6 system, which gives you a sort of triangular distribution, and that does have a nice balance between what I would call realism and, and sort of the dramatic elements. Um, the next thing to think about, of course, is um, how you want player skill or character skill to affect that distribution. And again, what I've got here would reflect a very realistic approach if you could achieve these probability distributions. Someone who's very average would have a sort of middling probability distribution like this, and as people get better, so this is, this is getting better. Um, not only is their average result increasing, right? The average is increasing, but the 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 spread is um, is decreasing. So here they're kind of that's sort of their interquartile range, and you know it might be a bit narrower there and even narrower here. And this would be a very realistic approach because you know as people get better at things, they get both able to achieve a higher result, but they also become more reliable at achieving that result. Um, again, there comes the question of realism versus dram dram dramatics. Um, you know, do we want a fully realistic system, or do we still want the, uh, the extreme results? Because, yeah, if people are getting better and getting more and more reliable, it might actually mean that your game isn't F as fun anymore, because the results way down here are never going to happen, so you're never going to have those dramatic moments of of, of, of failure in, at the worst possible moment, which um, can 
always be fun and interesting. Um, so have a think about the shapes that you want your probability distributions to have. Um, there comes the question then, of course, of how do we make these distributions? Um, what kind of mathematical tools do we have? So if I come over here, and have a look. Um, how are we going to make our dice system? And I think an important part of making your dice system is making a teachable one. Um, it needs to be understandable. Um, and generally that means keeping it simple, having it be intuitive, which is slightly different. Um, you want people to have an intuitive sense of what a plus one is going to mean to their chances of success, or what rolling a bigger dice means, or whatever. And you want it to make it feel good. You don't want any um, feel-bad moments like the D&D &D system of, I beat the DC by 30 points, and it means nothing. So um, having it feel good um, is, always, is always valuable. In terms of the, the tools that we have to make them then, um, we've got a bunch of different mathematical op options. Um, we can be adding dice, we can be subtracting dice, we could multiply, divide, we can take the highest, take the lowest. Um, um, my advice to you would be, I would never do division or multiplication. While they can be used to make some interesting results, they are going to slow your game down, basically. Um, multiplication and division especially are slower operations, it takes people longer to, to figure out what's going on, and um, the longer that your, your dice system takes to resolve, the worse it's going to play. So I would, I would almost never use these. Similarly, of the other operations, adding, subtracting, taking highs and lows, I would try and limit yourself to maybe three, four, five as an at a maximum, um, because again, you don't want people doing too many operations. I think this is probably why the uh, the people are favouring a 2d6 plus x system a lot um, currently, because that is a maximum of three additions that you're ever going to do. Um, and again, as we talked about before, it has that nice balance between bell curviness and uh, a flat distribution. Um, I would I would really encourage you though to have a think about incorporating take high and take low, or, or variations thereon, um, because these are really powerful tools in terms of shaping your distribution. Essentially, they, they skew the distribution. Um, if we have a look at, at this plot I've got here, um, it shows a couple different uh, probability distributions for various uh, dice. I think in this case we've got 1d6, 2d6 take the highest, 3d6 take the highest, and 4d6 take the highest, and you can see how it's taken the flat line and kind of skewed it and made it even a bit curvy towards the higher results. Um, and similarly, you know, with these other, I think this is 3d6 take the highest too, you get a bell curve that's a bit shifted to the right, um, and yeah, 4d6 shifted to the right with take the three highest. Um, these are really powerful tools because they can do these skew, skew operations to your distribution while also feeling really good. I think it always feels good to um, be able to roll twice and take the highest value um, or, or similar mechanics. Um, finally, a quick note on um, the mechanics of, of dice distributions. What I have here is um, the different distributions for different numbers of d6 added together. So we start with this flat line here of 1d6, then you get a triangle of 2d6, 3d6, 4d6, all the way up to a very bell curvy 10d6. And um, it's important to be aware of how adding more dice to your system is going to change things. Um, generally speaking, the more dice you add, the um, the increase, uh, the more your mean is going to increase. As you can see, the, the, the mean is very clearly going up. Um, it also increases your range, um, so you can see here the, the d6 obviously only has six different outcomes, whereas 10d6 has uh, like 55 outcomes, I think. Um, so yeah, important to think about that kind of thing. Um, in terms of the variance, as a percentage of the range, actually as you increase in the number of dice, your variance is decreasing. And you can see that in this plot here. I've taken this same figure and I've just smushed 
all of the different variations so um, uh, distributions so that they go between 0 and 1 and obviously that's increased the the peaks to, to compensate right if you sort of squish in the distribution it's gonna it's gonna poke out the the top right um, and as you can see this flat line here is the is the 1d6 the triangle there is is the 2d6 and this top peak in the middle is the 10d6 so as you are increasing the number of dice um, as a percentage of your range it is it is decreasing your your variance so those are the tools that you that I would recommend using um, when building your die system you would like uh, what you want to do is try and have the number of dice to give you the right um, bell curviness so if you want something very bell curvy um, go to like five dice um, if you want something less maybe two or three and if you want something totally flat then just have one dice then you have take high and take low to skew that distribution I think this is really good for um, accounting for skill um, if people are more skilled it can skew their distribution to the right less skilled skew it to the, to the left and then le leave yourself um, adding and subtracting as your sort of main mathematical operations and limit yourself to maybe five operations at the most okay so in summary um, these are the things I recommend thinking about when designing your dice system first have a think about how your dice system can complement your game's theme are you doing something dark and gritty then maybe think about using a roll low and maybe having a very high granularity to your to your dice system um, what possible outcomes do you have do you want a binary success fail or do you want those um, success with a with a twist or um, do you want your critical fails or critical successes um, and how are you going to map those outcomes into your dice system three how realistic do you want it to be how bell curvy or how how dramatic do you want it to be and finally um, how does skill affect things um, again do you want that realistic approach of narrowing your distribution or do you want to leave there with some um, with some randomness to it or more randomness to it and I think once you've thought about all those questions um, you can then go on to make your system using the tools that I've discussed um, so yeah I hope that was interesting to you if you have any questions um, if you want a follow-up video I can go into a bit more detail about the mathematics um, I could also do a video about how to choose a dice system for other things like roll tables and for choosing ability scores. But uh, yeah, hopefully this was interesting to you and I will talk to you next time.